Good luck. Right then. Do you remember these? Used in a calorie-controlled diet, Marvel's made from pure fresh milk, but has almost no fat and around half the calories per pint. Put it on your cakes, pour it on your pie. Oh. Equals not like double cream because the fat is not so high, so eat it. Delight is made with real buttermilk to give a real buttery taste, but it has only half the fat of butter or margarine. Enjoy living in a healthier way. Oh. What's that? Oh. Come on, y'all. Right, Delight, yeah. Gold from St. Ivor. Half the fat and a buttery taste rolled into one. That was, a trip. That was a trip down memory lane. My wasn't mum used it? to come down with me trying to make that picture in the spread uh -huh. as well. I said, Leave the butter alone. Light to light. Amazing. Uh, now, once upon a time, low fat products were at the top of our shopping list, but it seems Brits are turning their backs on low fat and reaching for full fat dairy again. Yeah, has so ever been getting it wrong after all this time? No. We're going to find out from our nutritionist, Rob Hobson, which is really best for us. Morning, uh, mm. Rob. Uh, both, all of those adverts chime with me and Kat yeah. because we grew up in the 80s yeah. and the 90s when there was a really big push to everybody who needs to go low fat this, mm -hmm. low calorie that. But there's been a resurgence in full fat. Yeah, there has. And I think that messaging was really strong in the 90s, 80s, 90s. We were all told to eat low-fat foods. Yes. It's good for our heart. It could help us to lose yes. weight. Mm -hmm. But I think we know so much more now about fat. You know, those messages feel really out of date in mm -hmm. terms of what we know about fats that are really good for our health um, and the fats that we maybe need to be limiting in our diet. And I think people are still really confused from those messages, especially our age group and above. Mm -hmm. They still think that this sort of high fat is bad for you. Yeah. yeah, I always think that the easiest way with any of these food kind of discussions that we all have is to go, the, the least processed, the better. Absolutely. That's I think with everything. Yeah. The whole foods in the most unprocessed state, I think, is the yeah. way forward. And I think that's why a lot of people are moving to these sort of whole versions of, of foods, because mm. a lot of low-fat foods might contain a lot of sugar. They might contain a lot of additives. And with this whole ultra-processed food interest, people want less of that in their food and they want something that's more, more natural. So the yeah. assumption is, if it's full-fat milk, it's less processed? It's not less processed than semi-skimmed or low-fat yoghurt is no less processed than, than whole milk yoghurt. It's just had some of the fat removed. With low-fat yoghurts, mm. you could be going for something that's very ultra-processed, that is held together with stabilisers, thickeners, mm. artificial sweeteners, because yeah. you've taken the fat out. So I think if you're choosing low-fat dairy or high-fat dairy, mm. I think it's, it's a healthy food choice. And is it also that when you remove the fat, you remove some of the flavour, so therefore you add other flavours in as well? That's exactly what it is. And it's also when you remove the fat, you lose that mouthfeel. So you oh, have yes, to add like something texture. else in. The texture. And I think this is one of the reasons why people are moving back to these foods, because they like the taste. Interesting. They're preferring this taste uh, and the texture that they get. And it's satiating. So you feel fuller on a smaller amount mm -hmm. and that kind of keeps you fuller for longer. It's why when people are trying to lose weight now, we, you know, you can eat these foods when you're trying to lose weight as well. Mm -hmm. A smaller serving of full fat yogurt is going to keep you much fuller for longer. You're not going to get those hunger pangs and cravings that you get if you, if you have something that's not quite as sustaining. So how do we keep it simple? Because uh, as interested I am in nutrition yeah. and I try and stay fit and I understand that I'm getting nearly 50, I'm going to 50 this year. I know, I don't look it. You don't. Uh, but, but, <laughs> me so I'm, babe. I'm, <laughs> but I'm much more interested, but it just needs to be so simple for me. And this yeah. feels like it's just complicating everything. I was just like, right, low fat, low calorie, that's got to yeah. be the way I go. I think it's, yeah, I think you, like Kat said, I think you choose the, the, the whole foods, the most unprocessed, unprocessed you possibly can. Mm. I think whether you choose low fat or high fat is really up to you. It's your individual choice. If you had high cholesterol, I might encourage oh, I you to see. have lower fat foods right. because they've got lower levels of saturated fat. But for everybody else, they're, they're a perfect addition to a healthy, balanced diet. You might prefer the taste of a full fat Yogurt, you might not like the taste of full fat uh, milk. It might be too creamy. So yes. you go for low fat. It's all down to personal preference. So really, it's not which is better, high fat, low fat, or full fat, <clears> low <throat> fat. It's more about what your situation is, essentially. Yeah, I think it stands to the individual. And, you know, singling out these individual foods is also a bit tricky because it's what you eat as part of your overall diet. So whether okay. you choose low fat or uh, these full fat foods as yeah. part of your overall balanced diet, th they're perfect additions, whichever one you choose. Okay. Yeah. Do, you have a, do, yeah. do you have a preference though? Do you have something, that, a, a rule that you always stick by? So I try to stick to, like, like we said earlier, the whole foods in the most unprocessed state. 
I prefer full fat Greek yogurt, if I'm honest, yes. but I don't creamy. like full fat dairy milk. I find it too creamy. Yes, you know? I feel so, the same, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I prefer to have a lower fat. I don't really drink the plant milks, to be honest. I prefer to have milk over plant milks. So. OK, and what are the different types of fat and what fats are worse for you than others? What right, good fats, so, bad fats? Well, a lot of this messaging around fat came from research in the 50s around the link between saturated fat and heart disease. Okay. So we still have that there. So we try and encourage people to eat less saturated fat in their diet. Right. And the main fats we try to get people to eat more of are your omega-3s in oily fish. Right. Or monounsaturated fats that you find in olive oil, avocado, nuts and seeds, those kind of foods. Okay. They're what we should be opting for. Okay. What, what do you think is the biggest mistake that we're all making, Rob, that you feel like, do you know what, the, what if I could have a magic wand and help yeah. the majority of the country who are, you know, we've got this uh, obesity epidemic that's yeah. kicking off now, what's the one thing that you would say this is the best thing you could do to try and improve your diet, improve your health, whatever it might be? I think maybe to stop focusing on these individual diet strategies, these individual sort of, um, these individual types of foods, these arguments about different types of foods, I think we just need to focus on getting it right with the whole of our diet. Mediterranean diet, for example, is a really good one to follow. Mm -hmm. The gold standard, loads of health benefits to, to that. So maybe just trying to stick to one of those kind of strategies. Don't dip in and out of fatty diets and, and these trendy foods. It's just not going to do you any good in the long run. Well, I also f always find it so confusing because it's like one week potatoes are good, one week they're bad, <laughs> one week it's whole milk, one week... And I think yeah. a lot of it is because these studies come from back in the 50s and we've heard this terminology. Mm. But we don't really understand what it means. I don't think even... It's not even the studies in the 50s. I think when a new study comes out, it's yeah. reported and then it's made a big deal of... And six months down the line, you could have opposite findings. And, you know, it becomes very... This killer cure way of promoting foods and talking about foods becomes yeah. really confusing for people. So, essentially, it's about, I think, everything in moderation... Yep. Shuck. Hold a, up. A, <laughs> me a Mediterranean <laughs> diet. Yeah. Yeah. And a little of what you like often. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it kind of does boil down to that. It's not as easy for some people to, to maintain that. Yeah. But I think if you can keep that as your golden rule, stick to foods in their most whole state, unprocessed yes. state, that's a really good place to start. But, yeah. but you're right, it's about trying to get the balance right, uh -huh. I think is important. Uh, can I ask you a particularly sensitive yeah. uh, uh, question, Rob? Where do you stand on bone broth? <laughs> um, uh, there's some certain so, people are trying to force this on me. I'm a certain I'm, person. I'm certainly yeah. nervous of uh, meaty drinks uh, yeah. at, at the best of times. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, get in the bucket and <laughs> a straw. And you, do you do you take things like do you buy do you buy into this, the idea that, that you know if you drink the Bones, Be very careful what you I'm say, what Rob. I say, yeah, I mean, it, it has health benefits. This stuff in bones that is is good for you. It, I'm like you. I don't really want to drink hot stock, <laughs> meat stock, but there I are can bring health benefits. you a bucket too, Rob. <laughs> there right. are health benefits associated, but it's again. It's not a, a cure a cure all food as no. it's reported to be. I think a lot of these foods we hear about, we think they're going to be a panacea to all health problems and cure everything. But you just need to use a bit of common sense mm -hmm. and everything in moderation. Do you space find, do you, it's interesting because the thing about full fat milk as well is mm. undoubtedly when uh, when we in the eighties it was all full fat milk. Yeah. Now I couldn't. It's got to be semi skim now because yeah, I, and it's the flavour and the taste. Too much for me now. And Whole it was always milk. that was, you know, this is going to be better for you because there's less fat, there's less calories, but it's yeah. interesting, it's got to be bespoke. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What you yeah, want. it really does. And don't forget, we've got kids to think about as well. Yeah. So whole milk, whole yogurts, they're really good for kids. Okay. Under, infants under fives, great. Really good way to get extra energy into their okay. diet. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank, thank you, Rob. Coming Perfect. up next.